This is reference to worksheet 10. So you can see here, I've already joined the underarm seam, pressed flat and open. This is the seam opposite to the vents that we have at either side. Once this is pressed and open, we turn it to the right side. And then we're going to mark our seam allowance of one centimeter on the end event, our four centimeter hem allowance that we have on the pattern and the width of our vent on the other side, which runs into the seam stitch line on the top sleeve. Once we have that, we're gonna create a piece of pocketing for some reinforcement. But what we've done here, we've stretched the one edge when we've pressed it, so it'll lie flat on the sleeve because the sleeve has uh, a curve. Now we've stitched the seam together. So once we have that, I've put together the edges of the pocketing we're using for reinforcement to the top edge of the vent. This is then laying flat and basting along the chalk line we have just placed on the right side of the sleeve. Then across the top edge of the reinforcement along here, we have diagonally basted. So this is using the same stitch as you do for the pad stitch. So I turned my sleeve sideways like so, and then I basted down the top edge of the reinforcement. Once we've done that, we go to the wrong side. And here you can see I've done my diagonal basting in black, so it's clearly visible for you. But also, if you were to take the stitch to the right side by mistake, it makes sense that this basting is in the color of the actual garment. So I've used the diagonal stitch again. So I've gone down and back up, attaching the reinforcement to the seam allowance. Once these processes are done, we can then trim the excess fabric off around these three edges as close to our basting as possible. We don't want to cut the basting, obviously, or the jacket, so you just carefully trim along your basting edge. Once we've trimmed all the way around our pocket in, we're then gonna press down the sides of the vents first on the chalk mark that we've put on the front, using that as a guideline to know what allowance we are pressing over. Then we are pressing up the hem. Again, we have our chalk line as reference. Once pressed in place on the side here, we're gonna create a mitre. We're gonna just tuck the excess fabric behind itself to form that diagonal. Now on the mitre on the jacket, we cut this away, but we're not gonna do this on the sleeve because this gives us the option if we ever want to, to lengthen the sleeve. On our jacket, it had a rounded hem at the front, so that wasn't gonna be a viable option anyway. Um, but if you had a square fronted jacket, this is something you could also do on the vent of the body of the jacket to afford the option of lengthening or shortening at a later date. So once you have pressed them in, in position, and you're then going to use the same diagonal stitch to go down the side of the vent and across the hem and back up the other side, attaching the fabric to the pocket in. And then on the diagonal of the mitre and to finish off this side of the vent, we are going to slip stitch to secure them into position. So here on my example, you can see that there's the diagonal based at the cut edge of the jacket fabric all the way around. And then I've slip stitched 
in the mitre and the other edge there to seal. Obviously in the colour match thread you're not going to see these stitches. So the next stage we're going to have right sides of our sleeve together. So if we place it that our raw edge is there on our seam would be together so the gap you should have here would be a centimetre. It's just this won't lay flat because we have our basting and our hem stitch. Just to make um, the preparation and the lining attach that much easier and to keep everything neatly in place, what we're going to do now is baste down the opening here of our vent where the two overlap this is where we're going to baste to make this area secure so I've now basted closed the vent and the same as with the jacket vent when we look at it from the right side we want the top vent to sit that millimeter below the bottom vent because we don't want to see this under vent when it's being worn so the vent is basted close also the bottom of the seam i've put a couple of basting stitches in also this is just because this is difficult to get to um, when we're going to machine down this seam next so that will just hold that all in place at the top of the vent So the other seam of the sleeve has been joined together and this is why we had to tack the bottom of the seam because we need to fold the vent out of the way to come 6mm down past the top of the vent. Then the seam allowance is pressed open but the vent here is laying to the one side so here the seam allowance just twists across. We're not going to cut and snip in here because we're not going to weaken this point. So that will just have a fold there, a diagonal as it comes to be a flat open seam. We're now going to finish off the outer sleeve by back stitching across the top of the vent, holding these layers together. Now I'm going to go through the pocketing on the other side, the vent, and our vent and pocketing on this side. So, as always, I'm doing a contrast thread for you to see. So I'm coming through from the underside, and we're going to back stitch into the base of the machine stitch that we've just done. So, a small back stitch. So through all our layers. Then we go back the length of our first stitch. Then forward again, back to where our last stitch finished, bringing our needle forward. And do this right into the base of the machine stitch of our seam closure. And this has gone through all the layers of fabric to make the top of the vent secure. I'm just going to tie off my thread end creating a little loop, passing the needle through it. I'm just going to do that again. A stitch, creating a loop, passing the needle through it. And trim our thread end. So our outer sleeve is now ready for our lining. 
So I'm now drawing the two seams of the lining. Um, there is quite considerable ease on the one panel here, but as long as you're lining up your notches and placing the ease in, that is fine. Um, I've also done an extra machine based around the sleeve head. This is to use as a guide when we hand stitch around the armhole. So this is nine millimeters in from the edge, not the centimeter. So this allows for it to fold back and the actual stitch to be hidden when we hand sew it in. So now we're going to join the lining and the outer sleeve together. So with both pieces inside out, I'm going to place this under sleeve to our under sleeve here. I want to position the lining to sit above the jacket armhole edge, if we have a look at seam to seam. So I want this to be um, about two centimeters above. The two centimeter margin we have is the allowance we added onto our lining pattern. I've also chalk marked here 10 centimeters down the seam and this is where we're going to start by placing seam allowance on top of seam allowance and basting down our seam to hold the lining and sleeve together. We're going to do the diagonal based stitch um, um, which is our stitch used for our pad stitching. It is a stitch we are very familiar with now. I've just turned mine around to make it easier. So it's just seam allowance to seam allowance and our diagonal based. So it's important once you've constructed the sleeve and the sleeve lining that you press your seams open or as this process it will be far more difficult as you're trying to separate the layers of the seam and baste at the same time. So we continue down our seam. Once we have gone down this side, all the way down to as far as we can go, because of our basting here on the seam will prevent us from going any further. We then do the same on the other seam, uh, giving ourselves the two centimeter margin where our lining is sitting above our fabric. We put our seam allowances together and we diagonally base down to a centimetre above the top of the vent. So we want to stop short of the vent. So before we turn the sleeve into the right way, what we've done here is from the fold of our sleeve, I have marked two and a half centimeters down onto the lining. Any excess below this point, we are now going to trim away. Oops, there we go. So we only have an allowance now of two and a half centimetres below the fold of the hem edge of the sleeve. And then we can turn in the right way. So you can see here we have basted both sides, seam allowance to seam allowance. So now I'm going to go between the lining. So I'm going to put my hand in the right side of the lining. I'm going to grab 
the hem and turn through. So now we have a sleeve that is lined. We have to finish off the vent edges and the hem and also the armhole edge once it gets inset into the jacket. But we have our sleeve and it is lined. I'll just turn it in the right way for you to see. There we are. There's our sleeve lined. We're now going to do the first stage of finishing off the lining at the hem edge of the jacket. So what I've done first is fold back a centimetre and baste into position the raw edge along the edge of the vent. Then on the hem of the lining, I wanted to fold up and baste the hem, um, leaving two centimetres of the sleeve visible below the fold. Now the previous step was to trim the lining two centimetres below the fold. So this means easy maths that if I just fold back four centimetres of lining and baste into position across the hem to the raw edge on the other side. Now the basting stitch is halfway within the hem depth and this is because we want to leave this edge um, accessible for when we attach it to the jacket. So the basting uh, is quite small, need stitches all the way along the hem, holding it in place and midway in the depth of the hem. We're now going to look at basting the lining at the other side of the vent. But first, in preparation, we have to cut the lining back to sit past the vent. So from the bottom of the seam, which we have here, I have come down 1.3 centimetres. If I turn the sleeve around, you'll be able to see then that I have cut horizontally across so that the lining is released to be able to sit just past the fold of the vent. This lining is then basted in position, tucked underneath itself, and we are going to baste along that edge. The cut edge on the horizontal, we are going to fold diagonally, so we'll go up to the bottom of the seam and create a diagonal line and baste across there to secure that raw edge underneath also. So here you can see all the hem edges of the lining are basted into position. So what we're going to do now is attach them actually to the sleeve. So using the side of the wider vent section, we are going to backstitch down this edge, catching the lining and just this layer of the jacket. We are not going to go all the way through. We are then going to backstitch across the top here of the lining and down the other side Again, you're catching the lining and the jacket fabric, but not going through to the right side. Once the back stitch is in place, we will then lift the lining up and we will hem stitch the jacket fabric to the lining one layer of each. So the stitching will not be visible on the lining side or the jacket side. And then that is the bottom of the lining attached to the sleeve. So I'm going to start my back stitch. So what I've done to make it easier for myself, I've undone the basting that was holding the vent closed so I can access and have a, a decent hold on the vent. 
I can see where the raw edges of my vent in the lining and the vent in the fabric can match. We can place the edges together, the folds, and we know we should have a couple of centimeters there at the bottom. Now I'm taking my lining just a couple of mil back from that edge. I don't want to risk that the lining is going to roll forward. So remember, we only want to take the one layer of the jacket fabric and we're going to back stitch into position. These would be small stitches to hold this neatly into place during wear. We wouldn't want anything too large in this area. Again, we're making sure it is not coming through to the right side, through the jacket fabric and the lining, creating our back stitch. making sure the distance I'm leaving there is constant all the way up the side of the vent. As I say, this is just to make sure the lining fabric is not visible from the right side during wear. This is going to take some time, so I'm just starting this off so you can see it on the video. Now I'm going to continue up to the end. So we have backstitched all up the one side of the vent. On the opposite side where we have the excess of fabric folded back on itself, I've created a mitre just like we did on the fabric of the outer sleeve to just um, fold the bulk out of the way. So what I want to make sure now before I back stitch this line in place is that we're ending at the same point and we're not pulling and ca causing any drag at this point. So the lining there I can put together. You can see where this side of the flap sits just inside and our hem there is matching and then I'm just going to pin this in place to help hold it when I back stitch. I'm going to start from the seam edge. I'm going to work my way across and down. When I come across here I want to catch this layer of the vent to hold that secure and in place with all our layers. And then as we come down this side of the vent, it'll just be lining and a single layer of jacket fabric. So the same stitch as we've done just up here, a back stitch, it'll hold it secure and in place. Make sure you take your time when you're backstitching across the top of the vent, keeping all the layers flat, not creating any distortion in the lining. Remembering here as well where we have the diagonal seam, the seam allowance is very minimal. So you don't want to be too far away from your folded edge. It's quite thick here, trying to make sure you go through enough of the layers. See, we're nice and flat there on the corner. No lining is pulling or fighting against one another. See, so continue back stitch right to the corner and down the other side. 
I'm now going to attach the lining to the jacket around the hem. So what I've done, I've folded the sleeve in half, pinned the ease evenly around, and I've also made sure that I've got a two centimeter of jacket showing below the fold of the lining. I've put the pins behind the row of basting, so this allows me to fold the lining back and hem stitch. When I hem stitch, I want to make sure I cover the stitches that are the hem stitch of the jacket sleeve itself. So you want to make sure these are not too large, um, or otherwise you'll struggle to be able to have enough lining fabric to do the hem stitching. I'm starting sort of center sleeve, um, just to work the ease from center to vent and likewise on the other side. And we're going to fold this back and we're going to catch the single layer not coming through to the right side of the lining and then slightly diagonal catching a bit of jacket fabric then again coming diagonally across from the single layer of lining not through to the right side and you'll do this all the way across picking up a single layer of jacket single layer of lining so this stitching is not visible from anywhere else unless you were to look underneath the fold of the, um, that's created as we stitch across you'll see that towards the vent edges where we've back tacked we can't fold back as far as we can further along on the hem as these stitches are preventing that. So as we get towards the hem, we will just fold this diagonally and stitch down into the corner for the hem stitching to secure this.